So uh, I will begin uh, acknowledging the organizing committee, uh, Farinaldo, for the kind invitation to give this talk that uh, is not completely inside the, the context or the scope of the conference, but it, it also involves uh, precision physics and small effects that can be beyond the standard model. Uh, in this talk, uh, I will show how it can use uh, EDM physics for constraining physics beyond the standard model. Uh, I will give some examples of how this kind of investigation can be done. Uh, electric dipole moment is a very, very small effect in standard model and in, uh, in the experiment of physics. It is measured at the level of one part in 10 to minus 29, or 10 to 29 E centimeter. This is the EDM of the electron. So it is a very small uh, effect, but it can be measured in, in experiments that are currently done uh, around the world. Lorentz <coughs> violation uh, symmetry is uh, a, a, a program of investigation uh, in which you are interested in know to what extent Lorentz violation or Lorentz symmetry uh, hold in the uh, as a good or perfect symmetry in nature. So uh, you can allow you you can consider small violations of this symmetry. And uh, you usually investigate what are the consequences of these violations. And uh, you are also interested in know the limitations of such, of, of such violations. So uh, we consider uh, that both uh, Lorentz violation symmetries and the electric dipole moment physics can be included in a precision program because you are trying to measure very, very, very tiny effects. And this such a measurement can, can also give good directions to the physics beyond the standard model. Uh, the Lorentz symmetry violation, uh, one of the main framework to investigate this kind of uh, effects actually is the standard model extension that was developed by Collier de Costa Lec in, in 1998. Uh, it includes uh, tensile backgrounds that permit pervades all space. It is tensile backgrounds can be coupled to the physical fields of your model. Such, a coupl such couplings are uh, that include, uh, obviously, the effects of preferred directions can yield physical effects that can be measured or not, okay? But this is the main idea of the standard model extension. Uh, you have some ingredients that should be respected, like uh, uh, coordinate independence. independence. Uh, what does mean? It does mean that how you should include in our Lagrangian, should have a tensor for, obviously. It is similar to what uh, occurs in our tools of uh, uh, electrodynamics or classical mechanics, where your Lagrangian is written in terms of vectors. Vectors is a mathematical language that naturally includes the idea of coordinate independence, okay? When uh, you are in, in field theory, uh, the, mat the mathematical language is the tensor. Uh, this framework in includes uh, several properties of the use of field theory, like gauge invariance. The, the theory is also uh, renormalizable, and uh, you gain uh, the possibility of uh, prefer preferred directions that breaks the rotation variance, for example. So you have a uh, extended Lagrangian, extended Lagrangian, 
that consists of the standard model usual Lagrangian plus Lorentz violate effects that are considered here. As an example, I can show you what, what happens in the gauge sector, in the photon sector. This is the Maxwell term. This is the famous uh, Carroll field Jacquip term, where this, this is a, a vector, a tensor vector, uh, that copes the physical fields of the system and uh, uh, induces a preferred direction. Okay? It is, is a CPT even generalization or, or proposal for Lorentz violation in the photon sector. CPT odd and CPT even. All these terms are very studied in the literature. Uh, in the Fermi sector, you can also propose uh, similar things. Okay, you can propose uh, uh, a generalization of the of the Dirac Lagrangian, uh, where all where semi nu, demi nu, these are uh, tensor backgrounds that are coupled to the Dirac matrices. Okay, and you can also do the generalization of the mass. So this would be the the new Dirac equation. This is the general idea uh, what happens in the standard model extension of Colliday Costelec. Okay? Uh, obviously, obviously, uh, talk again, uh, these investigations are, are done inside a precision physics program. We are interested to know uh, to what extent the Lorentz uh, symmetry is preserved in the in nature, okay. Uh, the uh, a first uh, example of the precision in physics, uh, as uh, I talking about the uh, precision or investigations in physics as a, as a precision program, uh, I can talk. I needed to talk uh, the first case that came to us, that was uh, in, in the principle of Newton when he uh, devised the existence of a, a national gravitational mass. Yeah? So we know that Newton has imagined the existence of these two mass, and that they are equal, okay? And Newton performed experiments with a pendulum to state that these mass are equal with one part and tend to, tend to free. Today, Today, this equivalence, this equality, is to one part in 10 to 12 or 13. It, this is the base of the equivalence principle that supports the general theory of relativity of Einstein. Okay. Uh, coming back to the to the main idea of the seminar of this talk, uh, I will talk to magnetic dipole moment, and after to electric dipole moments, okay? The, the magnetic interaction is well described by uh, the dipole moments, magnetic dipole moment, scalar to magnetic field. This is very usual in, the, in physics, in physics free, basic physics. In the context of the quantum mechanics, uh, we have the spin, uh, the magnetic dipole is connected with the spin of the particle by this kind of relation. This is the gyromagnetic factor, the G factor, okay? And we know that uh, this G factor for the electron is equal to two. Uh, this is a, a, a great novel that appear in the scenario of the physics of the 20 years, 24, uh, when the spin of the electron was supposed to exist. Uh, in, in, the, in that time, th there was no theory to explain this factor, but the Dirac theory in 1928 was the first one to give a theoretical explication to this double factor. Uh, the, the spin is doubly efficient in the task to generate magnetic dipole moments in relation to the orbital uh, magnetic the, the orbital momentum, okay? But uh, we know that the G factor is only equal to two for 
called the elementary testicles. This was the scenario that appeared in 1928. Uh, uh, but sometimes, uh, but we know that there is a, a small deviation from the Dirac value. And this is the anomaly of the magnetic moment. Okay? This, this, this deviation is very well measured. We have uh, very ex several experiments in the literature measuring this deviation, uh, which is the level of 2.8 parts, 2.8 to 10 to minus 13. This is the experimental imprecision. And uh, it uh, measures the deviation from the theoretical to the experimental value. Uh, in accordance with the dipole, the electric dipole moment, uh, we can explain the, the EDM as a, a asymmetrical third distribution. Okay, at, uh, so uh, if you I am in the context, if we are at the context of the of basic physics, uh, we can suppose that the electric dipole moment is the third uh, x distance. But at the quantum level, we have a similar formula to the EDM uh, in connection, uh, similar to the magnetic case, where we have spin. This is, this is the electric dipole moment, okay? This is the uh, magneton, Bohr magneton, okay? The difference, uh, it, it also a sign of two, is that this quantity, it is odd under parity and under time reversal. This is the sign of two of IDM particle or, or the existence of EDM. Uh, so when you compare the magnetic interaction with the electric interaction of the dipoles, we see that the magnetic is, is even under CPT, okay? But the uh, electric interaction is odd under PT. So if you are searching for, if you, we are searching for EDM, we, we need to search for interactions that are odd on the PET operations, okay? Parity time reversal. The first, uh, now I, I talking about the, the uh, it's important to mention that the parity violation was first detected in, in 1966 in the better the case. The first uh, experimental measurement of the EDM was done in 19. Uh, 57 is the Oak Ridge experiment that measure the neutron EDM. Uh, at that time, 5 to, to 10 to minus 20. Now, it was improved in six orders of magnitude. This is the actual measurement of the neutron EDM. Uh, how we can measure EDM? Uh, how we can measure a, a, a so small quantity? These uh, measurements are done in cavities where we put an electric field and a magnetic field aligning, okay? And the electrons, for example, that, that are here, they undergo a cycloton frequency. And what the people measure is the, is the frequency of the particles that are inside. Uh, after time, they reverse the electric field. So uh, the, the contribution of the, this is the spin, okay? The, the contribution of the electric field to the uh, frequency is reversed. And when we, we make the difference, okay, uh, I, I only, uh, we, it, it only will remain the electric contribution, the magnetic contribution goes away. It's a way to, to isolate the, the electric contribution. Because the, 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 the magnetic contribution is, us is usually larger than the electrical one. So what the people measure is the difference in the frequency, the variation of the frequency when we reverse the electric field inside the chamber. It is allows to detect EDM effect, okay? 
so the, the uh, we have here some measurements to the electro EDM to, to the to the level of 10 to minus 29. Yeah, very recent measurements 10 to minus 29 uh, you know, improved by a uh, eight factor. Okay. Uh, in connection with uh, EDM physics, uh, it's important to mention that it is a very, very small in the standard model because the, the, the non-null contributions of the fields of the standard model appears at, at the order of the fourth loop. The, the contributions in two loops, three loops, all vanish. Uh, this analysis was done by Pospelov some years ago. Uh, the first non null contribution comes at fourth order loop, in relative order in the standard model. Because of that, it is so small, 10 to minus 38. Uh, in the best measurement for the EDM of the electron is 10 to, thir 10 to, to, mi to minus 29. So we have uh, 10 to 9. orders of magnitude difference between this experimental and theoretical prediction. What is happening is the following. Uh, if we detect EDM at some uh, numerical value in s uh, between this value and this one, it, it, it means that the, the standard model uh, is not correct uh, about the CP violation uh, sorts. There are another sorts of CP violation that should be considered uh, besides the ones that are actually considered in the standard model. But if the uh, another scenario is, is, is the following one. If uh, the, the experimental uh, measurements go continually uh, come near the theoretical prediction, so the standard model is correct, and all the sources of CP violation are already considered in the standard model. So this is a question that will be solved by the experiment. Okay? <coughs> uh, about EDM, it's important to, to consider the following question. Uh, if I have an atom with an uh, EDM behavior, uh, what about the, how is contained the EDM particle inside the atom, or how is the EDM content localized inside the atom? Uh, it can be an electron, or it be contained in an electron, it be contained in the nucleus, and the shift field is important, all the EDM behavior of the atom can be generated by, the, by an effective interaction between the nucleus, per the nucleus or the nucleus inside of the nucleus, and the electronic clouds. All these mechanisms can yield a EDM for an atom. Okay? And uh, there is I, I needed to mention the shift theory that is that was developed in 1963. Chief is the is the is the guy is the of the book of quantum mechanics, Leonard Chief. This is a very beautiful theory. Uh, what this theory says? It says that uh, if you have an atom with an EDM inside, if to detect the EDM, you need to apply an electrical field on that. Okay. You need to apply the electric field to connect with the EDM behavior. But when you apply the, electric the external electrical field on the atom, the, electric the electronic cloud polarizes. And it screens the EDM that is contained on the nucleus. So you cannot detect the, the EDM behavior at first order. Okay? This is the content. This is the main idea of the the shift theory. Okay. Uh, <coughs> so we have uh, analyzing 
three ways to, to evade the shift theory. Uh, the first one is consider the uh, relativistic treatment, treatment to, to electrons, okay? Uh, because of the one of the conditions of uh, of the uh, validity of the shift theorems is, is that the interactions should be non-relativistic. When you analyze the relativistic behavior, uh, you can evade and you can e uh, create uh, a relativistic effect. So we have suppose uh, we have suppose uh, no minimal couplings. The, this work was done with uh, a student of a PhD student Jonas in, in Maranhão. Uh, this is part of his PhD thesis. Uh, you have suppose uh, no minimal couplings and in, in and this yields yield modifications in the Dirac equation. Okay, and we see. Uh, EDM behavior in, in my Dirac equation. I, I such EDM, uh, we needed to really uh, confirm that it, pos it possesses the, the EDM behavior, but we see yes, né, because of, the, of its behavior under the discrete symmetries, PEP. Uh, so we can use uh, the experimental results to constrain the magnitude of this kind of coping, for example. So uh, you, you use the data of the experiments and, and we constrain uh, the magnitude of these non-minimal couplings to the level of 10 to minus 16 GV minus one, okay? This is a possible way to use the EDM physics to constrain dimension phi no minimal couples. This is a dimension five and no minimal couples. Uh, this idea is, is it was also, uh, Kostelek is the main figure in the world about, uh, he developed this extension of the standard model extension. He also worked with uh, dimension five, uh, Lorentz violation couplings. Uh, this is our publication of 2016, and and he obtained uh, some constraints to his coping, dimension five in coping, GV minus one. But see that with penny traps, he used penny traps, particles in penny traps to to, to constrain his coping. He obtains levels of constraining uh, ten orders mag of magnitude below that we can obtain with DM physics. Okay, so EDM physics is very sensitive to constrain physics beyond the standard model. Uh, we have also uh, tried to evade the shift theory and consider fin finite size nucleus. It was uh, uh, because uh, uh, when the screen uh, doing the shift moment, uh, doing the shift theory occurs, there appears a residual effect uh, when you apply the electric field on the atom, you only feel the residual effect inside the nucleus. This is the shift moment, which was devised by the first time by Flambeau, Tukhov, uh, these people from Russia in 1984. We have analyzed also this idea. It's a, it's a, it's a very long history, so I cannot talk about that. This is the shift moment, which is usual in nuclear physics, to the people that do nuclear physics, and to the people that study CP violation, okay, you have a suppose an, uh, a modification on the Coulomb potential due to Lorentz violating physics, and you have uh, calculated the modification to the shift moment. It was another work you have done with uh, Jonas, a and the the final part of the thesis, of his thesis, uh, was exactly on supposing dimension six electron nuclear couplings. What, this, what are these couplings? This is effect, they are effective way to generate the M for the atom.
but if okay but if if the nucleus couples to the electron to the electronic cloud with the p odd and p odd interactions we can create idm for the atom so this is the idea it this is idea that is already in the literature okay you have because uh, why is dimension 6 why dimension 6 copings because uh, you, you uh, we are talking about uh, interactions that are nuclear bilinear coupled to electro bilinear okay so uh, a bilinear from the nucleus to a bilinear with the electrons the 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 composer structure is dimension 6 this is very useful to the people that that does nuclear physics, atomic physics. So uh, we have several dimension six structures, interactions, <coughs> but if I am interested in EDM physics, I needed to, to search the ones that violate PET. So only these two bilinear structures do this task, okay? The unique P, it the other pieces. So I only focus on these two structures. This is not still the full idea. I, I need to, to retain only the stronger components when I do the non relativistic procedure for the nuclear, uh, for the nuclear spinners. Okay? Strong with strong, weak with weak with weak. So this is of our interest. It's the major component. Okay. <coughs> uh, what is not of the our interest is the components that are the mixing. I have uh, one uh, one weak with one strong, so this is weak. Okay. So from these two terms, I only retain that because uh, it is a strong component. Uh, what I I'm show uh, what I'm showing here is a revision of the literature. Okay, this is the uh, nuclear density that comes from the uh, condensing spinners. And uh, if I am interested in, in doing in analyzing the physics, I should be able to calculate uh, to evaluate the energy shift that is uh, yielded by this interaction, okay? Uh, so the problem is to determine the spinners of the valence electron that uh, 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 under which we needed to evaluate these quantities. Okay, this is, we found uh, all these things in books. This is the Dirac uh, Hamiltonian. Uh, I think. Uh, this is a first order uh, procedure, uh, perturbation. We obtain the perturbant wave functions if they have states of opposite parity. Okay, uh, it th there is a, math a mathematical that is complicated. These are spherical spinners. These are Sternheim solutions that are uh, known in the books. Okay. So I know to talk. Uh, I will not talk about the details. But we, uh, I am interested in evaluating the first order, the this first order uh, shift energy shift. Okay, like it, uh, these functions have a positive parity. I only consider uh, the opposed ones. Okay, the shift of ener energy. This is the electric field. So this is the EDM equivalent, it's the EDM equivalent, the, the, the quantity that makes the, that plays the whole of the EDM. So uh, the, the, the quantity that I needed to evaluate is, is that one, okay? Uh, there are the many mathematical details I will not show. I, I only, I, I only, I, I would like to only to show that it, uh, it falls uh, in an integral of these functions, okay? That is no in the literature. Uh, so what is, is important here is, is to show that this first of all evaluation, okay, 
can be const uh, I can evaluate the the EDM equivalent using the result of this integral. This this n is the nuclear density, and I can use I can use the EDM measurement to constrain these quantities. This should be smaller than that. This should be smaller than that, and I can impose this upper bound to the coupling constant of the interaction of the interaction. See that uh, this is a piece of the book where we have uh, taken this 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 things uh, in, in 1999 it was to the level of of 2.9 to 10 to minus 7 with this new measurement of the EDM in 2018 this uh, this upper bound was improving to the level of 10 to, min to minus 10 three orders of magnitude so here we have no Lorentz violation here okay I have a uh, small time. I only show the main idea how we can use these effective theories uh, of the nucleon with the electrons to constrain no minimal interactions. Uh, when we have a lot of violation, we have some tensor fields that can cope into bilinears, okay, of the nucleons and the, the electrons. And uh, in the January of this year, uh, Costalec, uh, we, we were working on these ideas at the same time, but he was quicker <laughs> than us. And uh, he published his work with many dimension six couplings, Lorentz violation couplings. Uh, and he studied many né, dimension six, dimension five, this is the dimension six that are important to generate the M physics. So we have uh, analyzed the, the coefficients uh, involved tensors with rank one, rank one, rank two, rank three, and rank four. Uh, in, in his work, he 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 only was able to constrain the dimension. Uh, the dimension eight, no minimal couplings, okay, and the dimension seven, dimi uh, no minimal couplings. Uh, no, 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 no. The dimension eight, our our dimension eight. He only constrained dimension eight, no minimal couplings, and we have uh, used all this formalism I present to constrain by the first time the dimension six couplings that are shown here, okay? These couplings were not constrained yet. And you have the EDM physics to constrain that. So we have analyzed the, uh, the couplings that appear to the nuclear the electrons. Uh, we have analyzed width of them. We have all that width of them generated them behavior, okay? And the width of that, that are not suppressing in the, no, in the non relativistic regime. Only that are important for us. So I will, I will show only the final results. Okay? Uh, this is the Lagrangian of interest. Uh, we have done it for the tensors of rank one, rank two, rank three. Okay? And you have used the procedure I have shown. Uh, uh, Take, for example, this, this Hamiltonian with the rank one. We have used the results of the literature for these integrals. And you have used the EDM measurement, the most recent EDM measurement, to constrain this Lorentz violation dimension six coupling to the level of 10 to minus 33 EV to minus two. This is the first uh, constraint on the scope in the literature. Okay, you have constrained several others uh, of the scoplings uh, using the, the procedure I have shown. Okay, uh, the conclusions, uh, 
we are interested in constraining dimension five and dimension six of uh, physics beyond the standard model using uh, the physics. We are also interested in the electroweak sector. Uh, it maybe it can be interesting to analyze uh, dimension six operators connected with anapolis that are connected with dark matter. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>